It is finally here, guys. It is draft week in the NFL. We are less than 72 hours away from the first pick of the first round being announced. We all probably know who that's going to be. For the Colts, they do not have a day one selection as of right now. Uh, that is subject to change. You know, you never know. Uh, but as of right now, we are looking forward to the number 34th overall pick in the second round. I am your host, Michael Terraz, is joined me by my co-host, Cody Felger. How are you doing, Cody? Hey, thanks for having me on, man. It, it's always great to, to get here, and especially my favorite time of year is draft time. So super pumped, man, to kind of just talk about and preview the draft here and kind of seeing maybe where the Colts are going to attack and, and, and try to improve their roster here. So I, I'm excited, man. Definitely, man. There, there's there been some talk uh, created by Colts fans everywhere in the last week. We'll, we'll be getting into that. But just to, just to kick us off, man, the first thing I want to talk about is this quarterback position heading into the draft. It's a popular conversation among Colts fans. Do we – draft one do we trade up for one the main guy i want to talk about right now is jordan love he's a fan favorite of the colts uh fan base where are you on jordan love are are you good if he was to if he falls to number 34 are you gonna take him over you know a wide receiver that we need other positions or another question is are you willing to trade up for Jordan Love? Yeah, and to to answer, I'll start with the second question because I think that is key here. Um, I personally would not be wanting to trade up for Jordan Love because I feel like in even listening to Chris Ballard in his you know kind of Zoom call with some of the local media, he said unprompted, honestly, I'd probably like more picks. So to me, that screams he's not going. He's not going to be a guy. It's giving up picks to move up. He's might be dra- trading down to acquire more picks. And so, you know, say a Jordan love does fall the 34 though. I think, especially with how deep this wide receiver class is and the uncertainty beyond this next season into 2021, you have nobody currently under contract. And even if Jordan love, you know, somehow falls there to 34 and the Colts did draft him, he's not going to get thrown into the fire right away. He's going to have one, maybe even two years, depending if Philip Rivers has a good year and maybe the Colts decide they want to bring him back for another year. So he has some time to develop. He has, you know, some warts and uh, he's not a perfect prospect by any means, but uh, he's a guy that would not necessarily have to start immediately. He'd probably sit behind Philip Rivers, maybe even Jacoby Brissett. Maybe they th- keep three quarterbacks on their roster, but yeah. I'm kind of of the of the belief of like if he somehow falls somehow to 34, I'm good with the Colts drafting him just simply because you need to figure out maybe this year or next year kind of your future in terms of the quarterback position and finding that guy. But also, um, I feel like you can afford to do that, especially with how deep this wide receiver class is. So. Yeah, I'd probably I'm probably there right now. That's kind of where I feel like I've settled on as far as Jordan Love versus a wide receiver. And so I like Jordan Love. I just, you know, I wouldn't and I don't think Chris Ballard would trade up and give away some more draft capital in order to go get him if he does slide. Yeah, I I think everyone knows how I feel about Jordan Love at this point. Uh I, I you know, said it on my podcast earlier today. And, I, and I'll say it again here. I would not be a fan of Chris Ballard trading up to grab Jordan Love. Uh, not when you have the needs on this team, especially at wide receiver, uh, any other, you know, elite players you could possibly get in the second round since this draft is so deep. If he were to fall to 34 and take Jordan Love, I will not be mad at him. I won't even be mad at the pick because that's that's the quarterback position. I honestly think I would probably prefer other quarterbacks over him because I think some of them are kind of already set as to where Jordan Love, all we hear is potential, potential, potential. 
But if they were to take Jordan Love at 34, I would be happy because that's the quarterback position. You now have a quarterback on the roster, under contract, beyond 2020. And he could potentially blossom into a great quarterback. Uh, With him, you know, there's still some things I want to see him work on, decision-making, precision passing, stuff like that. That's our take on Jordan Love. What I want to ask you next about the quarterback position is two things. Do you think Chris Ballard addresses the quarterback position in the draft? Or, and who are your best fits for the Colts? And who are your a list, even if it's one quarterback? Who are the guys that you want to see the Colts draft yeah and a little bit of sneak peek here into my the full mock draft which we'll talk about later on in the podcast but uh, i probably if the colts do address the quarterback position i'd probably say mid to late round just simply unless a guy is falling to you like a jordan love at 34 or whatever it is or one of those other quarterbacks really falls and you're like, well, we have no choice. He's the best player on our board. We need to take him. But, you know, if, if it falls away, I think it's going to fall. I would probably say fourth or fifth round. And and uh, one guy that I really like a lot is James Morgan. Um, he's a quarterback that has been linked to the Colts now. He's got the prototypical size, which I think is good. Um, he's got a lot of those, ta- those traits. You know, you're talking about Jordan Love with potential. This is a guy that has a lot of potential. He's got the physical traits. He's probably the smartest quarterback in this class. And he also is just a guy that I think it could translate well to the NFL level um, in terms of what he can bring to the table. Now, there's a reason why he's fallen to the fourth or fifth round. It's because he hasn't had, a, he didn't, he wasn't great in college in terms of numbers. His stats were not uh, eye popping at all. But, you know, he's a guy out of Florida International that, I think could potentially develop into a good starter, especially working with a quarterback guru like Frank Reich. Um, I definitely think that he's a guy that I would be interested to see because he's a guy that, uh, that I think, you know, similar to whoever you bring in, he doesn't have to start right away and he can get refined and he can grow and he can learn behind these other quarterbacks, Philip Rivers, Jacoby Brissett, and learn and grow with Frank Reich in this offense. So that's one guy that I really, really, really like. Uh, who, is there a guy you really like here? My personal favorite, man. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. I know I have three favorites. Uh, it's Jacob Eason. It's Anthony Gordon and also James Morgan. I think these prospect prospects are kind of set on who they might become with Jacob Eason. I feel like if he was drafted by a quarterback needy team, he could start from day one. I think he just, he just has the makeup of a franchise quarterback. I've studied him very closely. The arm strength is phenomenal. The accuracy is, it's probably better than Jordan loves. The velocity is there. I just love his, his awareness in the pocket when it comes to Anthony Gordon, the feet. Yeah. It it does need improvement. It does need big time improvement. Uh, But the arm is there. The accuracy is there. His ability to throw the ball is there. I know he was playing with Mike Leach. So his, you know, that air raid offense, that nothing but passing offense, it's going to be inflated numbers, but watching the film, man, you see the arm. And with James Morgan, like you said, he can drop some dimes. I think he might turn into a fine starter one day in the NFL. Those are the guys that I'm really set on for the Colts. When it comes to guys that I'm kind of out on, the one guy that comes to mind is Jalen Hurts. He's just, I know he had a good week of workouts at the Senior Bowl, at the Combine, but I can't ignore that game film, man. I, I just can't. I you know, in times where they were up by a touchdown or two touchdowns and they needed to put the game away, here goes Jalen Hurts with a turnover. Here he goes with some bad decision making. It it was just one thing after another after another. 
and it, it held Oklahoma back a little bit. So I'm out on Jalen Hurts. I'm out on Jake Fromm. Those three quarterbacks, Eason, Gordon, and Morgan, those are the guys that I'm set on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now... Maybe now I guess we can move on um, to kind of looking at the wide receiver position a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I know we wanted to talk about the wide receiver. It's a very deep class, like I mentioned. Uh, lots and lots of names that probably will be have been linked to the Colts, and a lot of people will project the Colts to take different guys. I've seen so many mock drafts with so many different receivers that people have mocked to the Colts. Uh, Michael, who are some of your guys that you think um, the Colts should look to address um, that void at the wide receiver position? I I spoke a bit about it. My four favorites last week. And I'm going to add one on top of that. I got Jalen Rager. I got Michael Pittman Jr. I got Van Jefferson. I got Donovan Peoples-Jones. I'm going to go ahead and add Chase Claypool to that mix. Uh, For those of you who are asking about Denzel Mims, if I was was comfortable in thinking that he would be available at number 34, trust me, he would be there. But I, I just don't see him leaving the first round. I just don't. When you got got teams like Minnesota, Miami, New England, New Orleans, Green Bay, San Francisco, teams like those that need wide receivers, I I just don't see him leaving the first round. But trust me, if he's there, he's probably the first guy I'm taking out of the five that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. My guys in Jalen Rager, you know, I've spoke about him enough. You know, the only thing I have with him are the drops. So I definitely want to see him clean it up. When it comes to Donovan Peoples-Jones, you see he can work out. You see he can do um, the routes physically. He just wasn't, you know, he just wasn't asked or demanded of that, which is crazy because I think he was Michigan's best playmaker and Jim Harbaugh just didn't get him the ball. So Mm -hmm. Chase Claypool is another favorite of mine. Van Jefferson, like I've spoken about him, uh, the best route runner. And then Michael Pittman Jr., you know, I think you said this before, Cody, I see a little bit of Reggie Wayne in him. That's where I'm leaning towards. You know, I, I really do like some later guys in the draft, like a Colin Johnson, if you want a big, strong body, a Devin Duvernay, if you want a speedy guy who's also a polished outrunner, guys like that. Where where are you at with the wide receivers and who are your personal favorites? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Tyler Johnson, another guy, 6'2", 205 pounds, probably a fourth round guy maybe a fifth round guy got him Minnesota he's a guy that I think I like a lot simply because he can make contested catches he's not the biggest wide receiver in the world but you know he he's a guy that doesn't he doesn't stand out in terms of height you know physical attributes he's not the fastest guy but he's consistent he's a guy that goes up and gets catches and I know that fits really well presumably in what the Colts are going to do with Phillip Rivers in this vertical passing offense in 2020. Um, so I like him a lot. Um, I like, I, I like KJ Hill a lot, the guy out of Ohio state. He's a guy that I felt like probably, you know, just didn't get enough uh, credit for how good he was. And, you know, my friend Derek, who's a big Ohio state guy was talking him up and saying, he's going to be the steal of the draft. And so, um, I like him a lot. Those are more late, some late round guys that I like. You know, you mentioned Chase Claypool. He's like him, physical freak. Uh, Denzel Mims, uh, Michael Pittman. You know, I, I'm also interested in Brandon Ayuk. Um, he's an he's an interesting name that I've kind of, you know, looked at a little bit. I'm probably not as high on Lavisca Chenault as a lot of people. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of him um, in his game, but. No, there's some guy. There's a lot of guys here. That the, a lot of routes that the Colts could go. I'm personally of the belief that you probably should get a bigger receiver to complement T.Y. Hilton, complement Paris Campbell, um, and just give Philip Rivers some weapons because we know how how much success he had with those bigger body receivers. So um, I'll probably lean towards that. But ultimately, you just need to improve, no matter how you do it, at the wide receiver position. And, and I just think that the Colts need to do that. And I think they will. I think they have the picks to do that, especially if they trade down, maybe acquire another pick, get a wide receiver. They have a lot of ways that they could go, a lot of routes that they can take here. 
but I, I honestly think they're going to take multiple receivers. I think they have to at this point. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of names and guys that, you know, could go fourth, fifth round that could still be good players for you. And so that just speaks volumes to how high and how good this class is. And so uh, it's an exciting, it's really exciting to kind of see this because, you know, it's especially exciting to see the deepest position is also probably the weakest position on the Colts right now, the deepest position in the draft. So the Colts can definitely address that. And I think it kind of speaks, Michael, to you, the Colts basically ignoring the wide receiver and tight end position in free agency because they knew uh, we got a lot of guys that we like here, a lot of deep. We have a lot. We have, this is a very deep receivers class. We can take a couple guys and we don't have to go out and break the bank to get a wide receiver. So yeah, those are some of my guys there is in terms of the wide receivers, just kind of to add on some of those guys that you had kind of mentioned. Definitely, definitely. Those are some good guys. Tyler Johnson is is a uh, definitely a, a great player in his own right. When it comes to the tight end position, you know, where where are you leaning? How important is this position when you're looking? You know, comparing the needs. You know, you're looking at wide receiver. You're looking at interior offensive or offensive line depth in general. Where are you? You know, looking to target the tight end position and Who are your personal favorites at the tight end position for the Colts? Yeah, um, I'm probably looking third round for the tight end position. I feel like that's kind of the sweet spot in a lot of mock drafts. One guy that I really like a lot, I you know, just recently started to really like him is Adam Troutman. He's a guy that I mocked to the Colts in our last episode. A guy that's just got excellent height. He's got excellent length. He's got a great frame for a tight end. I mean, he's 6'5", 251. He's very explosive. He was actually a quarterback when he came into college at Baylor, and then he he transitioned to the tight end position. So he's not he's not a guy that started as a young, you know, in high school as a tight end or anything like that. Like, he's still learning and growing into that position. So I think there's a lot of untapped potential there. Uh, Hunter Bryant's another guy that I really like. He's, a, you know, he's not the biggest guy. He's not going to contribute a lot in – in terms of the, you know, the run blocking game, just because he's a little bit undersized for a tight end. But he's a guy that I like quite a lot. He can kind of be, you know, a lot of scouts have compared him to just being like a big big slot receiver. And that's just kind of what he does. Um, He can be a matchup problem in terms of just how he can get behind a defense. Um, And I like him quite a lot too. Bryson Hopkins, guy to Purdue, I like a lot. Um, I think he's probably arguably the best receiving tight end in the class, and he also can help in the run blocking department as well. Um, yeah, there, there, there's a few guys that I really like, um, but you know, there's a lot more, obviously. But those are just a couple guys that I'm like, you know, I, I would be all right with him drafting him at 75. And obviously, if Cole Komet falls, I'm right away. But, but yeah, that's kind of my take. Do you have any other guys that you really like at the tight end position? Yeah, um, when it comes to the tight end, you know, Cole Komet is probably my number one guy, uh, but I, I've been hearing, you know, New England is really in love with him. I, I don't I don't know. I just something tells me Cole Komet just might go to New England. Uh, when it comes to my, like, a guy that I think is just a difference maker who might just slip is a guy you mentioned, Adam Trotman. He... I made the comparison last last week that he reminds me a little bit of Rob Gronkowski when you you look at his body type, when you look at just his structure, just the way he's built. He reminds me of him. And I think, you know, when I look at Bryson Hopkins, I think he's probably the best route runner out of the tight end group. I see it when I watch his film. He has good hands. Uh, If I'm looking at a mid-round, mid to late round tight end, I don't know. You know, I, I'm actually still debating on this one. I think Steven Sullivan from LSU is an intriguing pick because, you know, he was once a wide receiver at the combine. He had the ability to track down balls. I don't know how he is as a blocker, but he definitely is a guy who can go up and get the ball. When you're looking at other guys, Mitchell Wilcox, Cox, Harrison Bryant, these are some guys that I'm looking at in the mid to late rounds because I don't know if tight end is that important on Chris Ballard's 
draft needs. So that's where I'm leaning when it comes to the tight end position. Uh, Moving on here, we're going to talk about the offensive line. You know, we lost Joe Haig to the Tampa Bay Bucks. You know, he got the chance. He's getting the chance to start. Josh Andrews leaving as well. He was our best interior depth piece. So when it comes to the offensive line, you know, there is a possibility Chris Ballard could like a tackle at number 34. I just, you know, I've come to the conclusion that he's not going to draft a tackle that high for him to sit two years behind Anthony Costanzo. I, I just, unless he had plans to, you know, if Anthony Costanzo chose to not return, then I would opt for it. But I say take one in the mid rounds. Now, when it comes to the interior, there's all kinds of of uh, prospects, all kinds of guys. I mean, you're looking at Nick Harris from Washington. You're looking at a Daryl Williams in a later round pick from Mississippi State. There's lots of guys in here. Cody, where are you on the offensive linemen and how important, you know, maybe not important, how do you expect Chris Ballard to attack this position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pro- probably with you. I, I would probably expect him. I think there's bigger holes and bigger things to kind of deal with right now in terms of, you know, just your, where you're at and your roster is, especially wide receiver. Um, and depending on what happens with Malik Hooker, if you decide to not pick up his option for some reason, well, crap, but then we got to decide how are we going to look at, the, the the future of the free safety position. Um, but yeah, I'm probably with you. I just think right now it's about getting depth. It's not so much about, um, you know, find, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm kind of like torn on one hand because like, I see what you're saying with like, I don't know if you'd want to draft a guy to sit behind Gastonzo for two years, but I'm kind of also like Chris Ballard's a guy who just, he, lo- you know, we can say we love our families. We love whatever. Chris Ballard, he loves the all of defensive lines. Like he loves them so much. And uh, and as a result, it's just like if he takes an offensive lineman at 34, I'm not going to be shocked, honestly. He's just that type of guy that just doubles mm-hmm. down on how much he loves that position. I would be a little surprised, but you know, going back to it, it's just like it's just Chris Ballard being Chris Ballard, man. He just – he believes so much in that. Um, and we saw, like, now he's arguably turned the biggest weakness that the Colts have ha- had really in the 2010s and has turned it around and turned it into the biggest strengths that they've had, you know, projected at least into the 2020s. And so, um, you know, there maybe maybe one of those offensive tackles kind of slides. I know um, there's kind of, for some scouts have kind of said, you know, there's going to be, Four, you know, there's going to be probably four or five tackles off the board, and then there's going to be a big drop off after that. And so, if one of those guys falls for some reason, you know, if one of those guys like Austin Jackson, Josh Jones, somehow slides out of the first round, I would not be shocked if Chris Ballard honestly went and, and got his tackle for the future um, to kind of groom behind Anthony Costanzo, but. You know, from my perspective, if I'm making the decisions and I'm pulling the trigger, I'm probably addressing it more in the mid rounds. Um, I'm probably just getting some depth because you can find some some good quality depth in the mid rounds. We saw that, and and Joe Haig, he's a fifth round pick. Josh Andrews, I don't even know you you signed him in free agency, so you can find depth different places. But um, I would say, yeah, probably mid or to, mid to late rounds is where I would see the Colts addressing that offensive line. I do think it's it, it is important especially considering like, Hey, you know, you, you got to at, at one, you know, the Colts offensive line obviously was so durable last year. And it's kind of like, you have these two different scenarios here where it's, yes, we have to get quality depth behind the five guys that we have now, but then we also have to keep one eye looking towards the future in terms of finding Anthony Costanzo's eventual successor. And so, um, yeah, I guess to answer your question, I would personally want to do mid round, but if Chris Ballard's like, 
one of these guys slid. He's the best player on our board by far. He's going to take him. Like, he's going to take him, no doubt. And Chris Ballard's not a guy that's, you know, if he, if, if one guy, you don't, you know, you don't think necessarily it's a need, but he's the highest guy on the board, Chris Ballard's going to take him. He believes in that. He doesn't believe in reaching just for needs. So that I guess that would be the scenario for me. I would say unless that happens, he's probably going to go mid-round. All right, good stuff. Good stuff here from Cody Felger. Uh, I'm Michael Tarazis, the Colts Brawl podcast. We are literally three days away from the NFL draft. Moving on here, you know, discussing other positions that might need to be addressed. Because when you're looking at the offense, you're looking at the tight ends, the wide receivers, the offensive lines. When you're looking at the defense, you don't really, you know, on paper, you probably wouldn't even address it. But if there's one place you probably want to address, it is the secondary. Because, you know, like I've touched on it last week, you know, are, are you banking on TJ Carey, who's had a little bit of a rocky career? Are you banking on Xavier Rhodes, who the last two years dealt with injuries, has had a hip issue? Are you banking on that? You let go Pierre Desir, a reliable guy. You got a slot corner in Kenny Moore. You got Marvel Tell, who's flashed potential, but you don't know what you have. And then you got Rocky Sin. You also need debt behind Kari Willis. So I want to focus on the cornerback position here, Cody. If you're mm-hmm. going to draft at either position or at one position only, where are you leaning and what players are you looking at? Yeah. Yeah, and I have a guy that, you know, I mocked to the Colts um, in my mock draft as well. Um, that's Damon, Damon Arnett. I think that's how I say I think that's how you say his first name. <laughs> Damian Damon Arnett um, out of OSU. Uh, I think he makes a lot of sense just in terms of he's a physical corner. He's kind of got the parameters of what Chris Ballard is looking for. He's a guy that's that's pretty good in man, which I think we saw the Colts play a little bit more man in 2019 as opposed to 2018. Um, he's a guy that I think he just needs to continue to refine his craft, and he could be a potential top corner in the league um, with you know just continuing to develop because – He's got great ball skills. He's got he's got good ha- he's got good hands. He's he's very quick and flexible. Um, he he's a guy that you know has a he's a good he's good a good athlete. He's a good player overall. There's just some technical things that he has to clean up about his game. Um, and there's there, a lot of th- a lot of times a lot of this stuff is just getting acclimated to the NFL level and just learning different things about the NFL. And we saw last year with Rocky Asin, like he had his ups and downs. He had his lumps, but you know, we're th- he definitely showed improvement as the season went on. And I think that's just kind of what happens, especially at the corner position. I mean, you're that's, I would argue besides the quarterback position, that's the hardest position to play, especially getting thrown in there as a rookie. And so I think he's a guy that, you know, will be if he gets thrown in there, thrown into the mix, he's a guy that I think can hold his own and can really show a lot of good things for you. Um, so I like him quite a lot. Damon Arnett is definitely a guy that that is on my radar. I know you had one guy, Michael, um, that you really liked that you mocked to the Colts. Who was that guy again? I I'm totally sort of slipping my mind here. AJ Terrell from Clemson. That's yes, okay. that's a guy who I mocked to the Colts last week. I, I just think. He has the right build to him. I, I just see it in him. He has good athleticism, good ball tracking skills as a corner. And, I mean, he recorded 21 tackles with, you know, one pass broken up and two interceptions. I mean, he was solid. He was solid. I wouldn't, you know, as a whole, looking at more film, probably unspectacular for by Clemson standards. But... You know, in the national championship game, he had kind of a rough time with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. But overall, man, when I look at him, I I see a lot of potential. Not even just potential. I just see it. He he has it. Other guys that I look at, you know, Noah Iganagani, a wide receiver. um, 
you know, a converted wide receiver. He's a corner now, and he played pretty darn well at Auburn. He was physical. He can play press man coverage. I think he's a guy that will become what I think Chris Ballard hoped Quincy Wilson would become. You know, when we looked at him, we said he's great in press coverage, great in man-to-man coverage, and so far it hasn't worked out the way we have all hoped for for Quincy, but with Noah, I think he he has it. He has that strength. He has that speed. Other guys that I'm looking at, if you want to address it, probably, you know, in the mid-rounds, are guys, you know, like a maybe you want to go with a Troy Pride Jr. from Notre, Notre Dame, you know, 40 tackles, uh, six passes broken up, one interception. Another guy, he, he was solid. Um, not too impressive, but, you know, with a good combine and everything, he, he was pretty good. A four, four flat with uh, 40 at the combine. And I think he showed good film. I honestly don't know too much about if he's going to make it, uh, uh, you know, be a mainstay in the NFL. I'm hoping he does for his sake. Other guys, you know, I've touched on it. Lamar Jackson from Nebraska. I love him. Mm -hmm. You know, the athleticism, he has it. You talked about it. It takes athleticism to play the corner and he is just athletic. He does struggle sometimes with ball tracking, but I think if he gets coached up by the coaching staff and the Colts have a good cornerback coach, if he gets coached up and everything, he can, you know, blossom into a great, great, uh, press man corner, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another guy, my last one here is going to be Michael OJ Moody from Iowa. Another guy who has a Noah Iganogany built to him. He's strong, he's fast, and he doesn't get beat too too often, not too often. So though that's where I'm leaning when it comes to the safety position. Oh man, you know, I think you can find some really good guys in the later rounds to put behind Kari Willis. And that's that's where I'm at with, with the secondary. Are there any safeties that you're leaning towards in this draft, Cody? Yeah, before we go to safety, another guy that I wanted to mention at the corner group, Jalen Johnson. He's a corner out of Utah, mm. six foot one ninety. You talk about athleticism; he has it. He can match up with any wide receiver in the league. He's a guy that um, is very, very good at his quickness off the line. He's a very good guy, um, very good at mirroring receivers. Um, he's a guy that has great, great ball skills. Um, you know, I think a knock on him will be he doesn't have the longest arms. He has average arm length. Uh, but he, you know, he is just a competitive guy, an athletic guy. Uh, he's a guy that I, I think is very patient and very disciplined. I would like him personally at the Colts if he somehow, you know, is, is falling there and, and falls to the Colts at 34. I like him a lot. And also, I don't know if you mentioned – I don't know if you mentioned Trayvon Diggs or not, but if he somehow falls also, I like him a lot. Corner out of Bama. He's a, he's a little bit bigger. He's 6'2", uh, 207 pounds. He's a guy that I, that I like too for the Colts. But again, some of these guys may not even fall in the first round, honestly, but he's a guy that I like a lot because he's very good at zone coverage. And we know the Colts primary thing with their corners right now is, is the zone coverage. And so I like him. Um, in terms of that fit for the Colts defense, but yeah, moving on to kind of the, some of the safeties here. Um, yeah, it, it is a question because, and it is a concern because obviously you don't know with, especially, you know, with, with the uncertainty with Malik Hooker or the Colts going to pick up his option, but um, Antoine Winfield's a guy that I like. Um, I think he's a guy that, um, he's not particularly super, super athletic, but he's a guy that, I think uh, he he has really good ball skills. Uh, he's very very tough. Uh, he's a guy that he's very just he's a very f- smooth and fluid runner. Um, he's a guy that I think um, is also very versatile as well, which is huge. Um, but he doesn't have elite range, which I think is going to be a con for him. But he's a guy that I really like. I know some people have been talking up uh, Jeremy Chin out of Southern Illinois. He's a guy that uh, people have been really, really high on. 
especially. Um, you know, there's some other guys there, but th- those are a few of my guys. I know that wasn't a lot of them. Um, you know, maybe if you go a little bit later, especially if you're looking to try to go, okay, you know, Clayton Gathers probably not going to come back, right? We're kind of yeah. believing at this point Clay- Clayton Gathers is probably gone, as good as gone. He's a free agent. He's 28 years old. Uh, but I like Khalil Hudson as well. Um, he's a guy that I think uh, he's going to be an interesting prospect as well because he's a guy that uh, is a very, very good blitzer. Um, he's a guy that has a lot of de- – he can develop a lot, and I like him. I like him quite a lot. Um, yeah, keep moving on here. Even like a guy like Reggie Floyd out of Virginia Tech, he's a bigger guy. He's six foot two twenty two. Um, so he's kind of that premier box safety type of guy. Um, and he's the guy that has, you know, he he can also kind of move around and maybe play some dime linebacker for you in certain situations and certain defensive packages. Uh, so it, those are a few of my guys that I have. Are there any guys that I missed? I know there are a lot more safeties on here, but who are some of the other guys that maybe I, I missed that you really are high on? I will say that it is definitely intriguing if you want to take a safety in rounds two or three, because, I mean, Mm. if that happens, man, I think that might be a sign that Malik Hooker might not be a cult for long, uh, for much longer. Uh, But to touch on some guys, you know, I like a Kayvon Wallace from Clemson, another guy who, like you said, who can play in the box. He can get physical. He's actually pretty good in the midfield. Uh, But I think you touched on all of them. Uh, With Jordan Fuller from Ohio State, he was projected to be like a third round, but he's kind of slipped. You know, the combine wasn't that too good. Uh, You know, I think he plays better than what he showed at the combine. So we, we have to wait and see there. I think he's a... Good fit uh, for the Colts. I think he's great in zone, which Colts love to run a lot of zone. That's one thing I got to say about this zone, man. I think we got to move a little bit away from this zone, go a lot more man, press man. I definitely want to see that because, I mean, nowadays these riders, wide receivers are just too fast and they'll beat zone all day. <laughs> so... That's where I'm at with the safety position. One question I wanted to get into regarding Malik Hooker is what I mentioned earlier. This has been a conversation brought up in the Colts fan base. What are your thoughts on the Malik Hooker situation? Do you think they pick up his fifth-year option, or do they make him earn it in his Mm -hmm. potential final year of his rookie contract, or do you see him getting traded? I, I don't see him getting traded. I think he's a guy that you pick up his fifth year option, maybe you draft a guy and you kind of play it, see it and watch it and see how it plays out. And then if Malik Hooker doesn't live up to this potential this year, then maybe you start having conversations. Okay, maybe it's time to look somewhere else. But you know, Malik Hooker last you know, last year start of the season, he played super well. Um, he just, you know, had some lapses in coverage and there was just, you know, a bunch of different stuff, but it's not like he's been bad when the Colts, have, you know, throughout his years with the Colts. I mean, looking at 2017, he was playing phenomenal. He was getting interceptions left and right. And then that injury happened. And then, you know, I, I think, you know, even though he hasn't had, you know, mo- a lots and lots of interceptions on a year to year basis, he's a guy that is more valuable than you think. He is a guy that, you know, you look at some of the stats that, you know, that people don't recognize and people don't initially see, like people did not throw at Malik Hooker for a reason. And that's the reason why he didn't have a lot of interceptions because nobody threw the ball his way. Uh, he's a guy that can definitely help. He definitely helps so much in terms of stopping the deep passes. I know last year was kind of a rough year for him, especially at the back end of the year. But, you know, he's just a guy that I think he has so much potential still. And I think it just it it makes sense to see what you have. I really think it does. Um, and in and, and the thing is, like if you pick up his fifth year option, you're not having to commit long term to him necessarily. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just you're giving him another year to see what he has, and that's kind of the beauty of first round picks. Um, you can kind of see, but you know, I think he's a guy that 
obviously he hasn't lived up to his billing 15th overall in 2017, but I think he's a guy that's shown a lot of flashes and shown a lot of good things. Um, he's been a, he's been a pretty decent player for the Colts. And I think um, just, you know, maybe a light, you know, maybe this year lights a little bit of a fire under him and, and you know, the addition of DeForest Buckner maybe helps that secondary a little bit more. And so there's a lot of factors that contribute to that, but um, I probably personally would. I, I don't know if you have a different kind of stance here on Malik Hooker. No, I'm kind of I'm kind of the same. And people, I'm not sure if they've forgotten or what, but he tore his ACL his rookie year. And prior to that, I believe he had already like four interceptions. He was playing really well. And that ACL happened. He came back in 2018. You know, that was his comeback season. He actually play, played decent, still missed a few games. And then in 2019, he had a couple of slip-ups, but I think he did show flashes. He did make some great plays. You know, everybody is going to remember that busted coverage on Thursday night against DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, that kind of, like, was a gut punch. But, you know, man, safeties make mistakes all the time. And... I think people get caught up into how Chris Ballard spoke highly of him on draft night when he was drafted because he compared him to Ed Reed, man. That is a huge billing to live up to. And, you know, he's a good player. Me personally, I don't want to see him traded unless, like you said, if you traded him, you better be getting Antoine Winfield Jr. You better not replace be replacing him with, you know, just some slob, some scrub uh, that can't happen. Uh, but I think his fifth year option will get picked up. I think I'm hoping that this 2020 year, it's going to be a big year for him. Like you said, DeForest Buckner coming in, he he'll help out that secondary a lot. I'm really hoping for a great year for, uh, for Malik Hooker. That's, that's where I'm leaning towards. So Mm -hmm. I think we've covered almost everything we've needed to cover on Colts needs wise. Uh, you know, looking over, not really finding anything else. So I think Cody, it's our final mock draft time. Let's do it. All righty. So guys in these, in this mock draft, you know, we're going to be going, you know, back and forth, you know, Cody's going to tell y'all his number 34. I will then tell my number 34. And that'll be the process, so forth and so on. Uh, in this mock draft, we're going to have trades. I'm not sure if Cody has some. I know I have a couple of mine. But that's where we're going to head in with this. So, Cody, I'm going to allow you to kick things off here. Colts are on the clock at number 34. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this is this one for me is just an extension off of my one last week. Um, but it's just obviously the full mock draft. So um, to go back into Denzel Mims, uh, wide receiver Baylor, 6'2", 206, 33, uh, over 33-inch arms, 9.25-inch hands, uh, ran a 4.3840. He's a guy that had over 1,000 yards. He was a guy that helped himself a lot with a fast 40 time, also was decent at the Senior Bowl. Uh, he's been a good receiver for for Baylor for for the last few years um and he's a guy that I think projects well in ter in terms of what the Colts want to do um he's not he's a pretty big body receiver he's 6'3 he's a guy that uh I think he's a good compliment like I mentioned I feel like you need to get your compliment to T.Y. Hilton and actually address it in the draft this year uh he's a guy that I think uh he maybe doesn't run the most diverse route tree in the world uh, that's obviously something that he can clean up and continue to develop. Um, but, you know, he has good body mobility. He has good uh, good skill to snap off uh, breaks as well, um, especially for his size. I think he has really good plucky hands. He's a guy that, that is really effective in terms of contested catches, which I mentioned that's really, really important, especially with what Phillip Rivers and his Colts offense are probably going to want to do. He's good at yards after the catch. He's a he's a guy that's got you know continuing to develop his football IQ, but he's a guy that's going to project well in in, ter in terms of the vertical passing offense. And I think he's a guy that you can plug in day one and not have to worry about your number two wide receiver position for the next 
so many years. I think he's just that good of a player. Um, and he's also like surprisingly for how big he is and how tall he is, he's a pretty fast receiver too. Um, you know, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's, he's pretty fast for being six, three, uh, and also just the fact that he has such long arms helps him in terms of run blocking. We know the emphasis the Colts have put on getting their receivers run blocking down the field, especially with wanting to be a top five run offense, you know, in the NFL. So for me, this, this makes a lot of sense. It really does. Um, and I think he projects really well um, at the NFL level. He has good catch radius. He's a physical player. He has good body control. Um, I think he, he can be a good starter for the Colts for a long, long time. Um, I think it's going to be a slam dunk if somehow he does fall there to 34, but that's who I have there. Definitely. Like I said earlier, I just don't see him falling out of the first round, but if he is there at 34, I'm all for it, man. For me, uh, I am going to do a trade. I'm going to trade back with Cleveland. Uh, like I did last week, we are going to get their, 41 overall pick and we're also going to get their third round pick the better one uh because they have two we're going to get the 74th overall pick so at number 41 i'm taking wide receiver donovan peoples jones i i love everything about donovan peoples jones uh, you know he had a 45 inch vertical jump at the combine chase claypool had a 40 inch vertical jump and he's two inches taller than Donovan Peoples-Jones. So, you know, we say we want a guy who can be automatic, who can go up and get it. Well, that 45-inch vertical jump, that's a guy who can go up and get it. His athleticism is good. I His catch radius is off the charts. His catch radius is just awesome. He, can, he catches everything thrown his way. And if he comes to the Colts, He's going to show out. He's definitely going to show out. You know, a 4 4 8 40 at the combine. Uh, probably not as fast as we would want, but I feel like he plays faster than what his 40 time says. Uh, you know, at Michigan, he wasn't asked, you know, like I said earlier, he wasn't asked to do too much. And that's on the fault of Jim Harbaugh. If he comes to Indianapolis, I think he can be a gadget guy. You know, he can line up in the slot. He can line up outside. He just has short hands. And that's one of the things I love about him. I feel like he can can just turn into a great number one pick, a great number one pick. So that is where I'm at um, when it comes to our first selection in the second round. So next up is our number 44 selection. Cody, where are you going with this one? Damon Arnett, the guy I already, already mentioned. Uh, that solves a quarterback cornerback position, not quarterback uh, guy that I think projects well into what the Colts want to do. He's a guy that has, um, you know, he needs to be, he needs to polish up some of his coverages, but I mean, he's a guy that I think is just an athlete. He's just a guy that's going to be uh, a physical type of player. He's a guy that, that sh has shown a lot of really good physical attributes and as a result, I, I think it just fits into what the Colts want to do. You mentioned there's just a lot of question marks with Xavier Rhodes, TJ Carey, even Qu you know Quincy Wilson, and then there's some other guys that you know you like, but you're you know not 100 like this is the top guy. You know maybe Kenny Morris, top slot corner, but beyond that, some outside guys. Um, and he he's a guy that can I think can challenge for a starting spot honestly from day one. He's the type of guy that I think is just. Uh, he's just what you're looking for in terms of um, overall, but um, he's a good guy, a good man coverage guy. And uh, I like him a lot here at, at 44. All right. Damon Arnett coming to the Colts at number 44. That's a good pick. Shores up the secondary at 44. I mentioned it last week. I'm going with it again. I'm going with defensive tackle, Neva Gallimore. You said it earlier in the show, Chris Ballard is in love with the trenches. You win up front and now you know then now that i've been reminded of that it will not surprise me if he takes a defensive tackle or an edge rusher in the second round i'm gonna you know speak on it again grover stewart 
a depth piece. Danico Autry, you don't know if he's starting at nose tack or if he's going to back up at the three tech. Sheldon Day, he's on a one-year contract. So how do you ensure the future? You take a guy in Neville Gallimore who is versatile, who can play both nose tackle and three tech. DeForest Buckner can also play three tackle, um, three tackle, nose tackle, and three technique. So you pick your poison, however you want to defend this lineup. Get those guys up the middle, flush the quarterback out of the pocket, easy sacks for Ben Banigou, Kamoko Toure, Justin Houston, or a blitzing corner. You know, Matt Eberflus loves to send Kenny Moore on those corner blitzes. And then with safeties who are blitzing, easy sacks. You just make your defense that much better. And you could possibly form a tandem of one of the best one-two punches at offensive line and defensive line in the league. So at number 44, I'm going defensive tackle Neville Gallimore. Get better on defense. So Mm -hmm. at number 70, oh, no, sorry. Uh, With the 70. Yeah, you go 74, right? Because that trade. Okay. Yeah, 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 because that trade. Okay, okay. That that confused me. So I guess I'll go again. Um, at number 74, the trade back with Cleveland, I'm taking tight end Adam Trotman. You know, it was the same thing as last week. I feel like he has a Rob Gronkowski type build to him. And if he can become Rob Gronkowski, Cody, the Colts are going to be in great hands for the next 10 years. Uh, you know, he's a good blocker at Dayton. You know, he didn't see that many uh tough defenses but i feel as though when he gets to the nfl it's not gonna matter because the athleticism is there the hands are there the blocking is there his feel for the field is there his build is like rob gronkowski but he plays as if he's a travis kelsey what travis kelsey does he is so good at finding his spots in the middle of the field. He is so good at that. He has good vision for the field as a tight end. With Adam Trotman, I feel like that is the same way. So not only are you adding an athletic wide receiver, but you're also getting a tight end who can just stretch the field in in any situation. Yeah. And then at 75, I'm taking the same guy, Adam Trotman. Uh, guy that's got, like I mentioned, he's got the size, height, length, all that stuff uh, to be a very, very good and very great matchup problem for an offense. And I think for the Colts offense, especially, we know how much Phillip Rivers loves to use his tight ends and he can use, we know Jack Doyle, the kind of player that he is. Uh, Mo Ali Cox, a good run blocker. And then if you had a guy like Troutman who gives you more upside in terms of receiving and vertical threat, I think it just makes too much sense, honestly. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that 6'5", so he's going to be a red zone threat for the Colts. Uh, I like him a lot. I think he's a guy that's also a tough guy, and he can block. It's not like you have to – you can only – it's not like an Eric Ebron situation, right, where you only have him in on passing plays, it seems like, because he can block. And I think that will serve – give your offense – even more an advantage because you don't have to scheme. Okay. Just this, these plays for Adam Troutman, he can be in on every single play if need be. Um, Nothing will be no Adam. We don't want you on this play. You don't do this. Well, he, he's a guy that uh, can do everything well. So uh, Adam Troutman, I like quite a bit there at 75, but who are you taking now at 75 since you got out Adam Troutman off the board? All righty. So at 75, the Colts are going bring, bring, bring. Oh, who's calling? Is that the Las Vegas Raiders? Oh, you want to do a trade back? All right, let's trade back. Let's do another trade. The Las Vegas Raiders are going to get our 75th pick because they don't want to wait any longer and miss out on a chance for a player they love who slipped. We are going to receive their 81st pick along with their fourth round pick at 120. One. So at number 81, we touched on it. Interior line depth and maybe finding a guy who can take over once Mark Lewinsky's contract is up or if he's ever traded. So at number 81, I'm taking guard from Michigan, Ben Bredesen. 
He is a guy who his natural position is left guard, but he does have experience at center. He's been coached to be center, and he can play right guard. If he comes in at right guard, he's almost like a smaller Quentin Nelson. He will just put his weight on you. He will stop a defensive tackle or linebacker in his tracks. And he will definitely make the Colts offensive line better and stronger. He has good feet under him, strong hands. And I I have Ben Bredesen coming to the Colts. All righty. So now moving on, my 122nd pick here. I have them beefing up their wide receiver core again, selecting wide receiver Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota, 6'2", 205. Mentioned him already, a guy that's great at contested catches, which is huge for the Colts. Um, he's just giving Phillip Rivers another big body target, which I like. I think he fits project projects and fits very well into the Colts, presumably vertical passing offense in 2020. And I really like him as a fit with this offense, just giving Phillip Rivers more and more weapons. We know how deep this wide receivers class is. And this is just showing how deep it is. I think he could come in and he could make an impact on day one. Awesome. Awesome. Tyler Johnson. I love it. I love it. Now for my fourth round pick our, you know, the, this is going to be the 121 from the Las Vegas Raiders uh, before we get to our 122nd. So I am going to go with a tackle because I think right here is where you start to see some tackles starting to fall off the board. You're looking in the later rounds and you're saying, I don't think someone's going to be there who we like. So at number 121, I'm going with tackle Terrence Steele from Texas Tech. I liked him coming out of, uh, coming out of Texas Tech, watching his senior year film, but then watching him at the senior bowl, you know, going up against guys like Javon Kinlaw, A. Neville Gallimore, A. Julian Aquara. Going up against those guys, he showed good strength, good feet movement, good strong hands. And I think sitting behind Anthony Costanzo, grooming under Anthony Costanzo, he will become a, a, a good tackle for the Colts. You know, if he can become a Anthony Costanzo, that's even better. But right now, I have Anthony, uh, Terrence Steele coming to the Colts at 121. Mm -hmm. Okay, now 160 pick here. I have the Colts selecting quarterback James Morgan, 6'4", 213, Florida Ooh. International. He's a guy that I really like a lot. He's a guy that had a better like 2018 it. season than 2019. So it's kind of funny because it's that's the same case with Phillip Rivers and then a guy that's been linked to the Colts, Jordan Love. He's a similar similar here, and he can be very polarizing for a lot of Colts fans and a lot of fans in general because he's a guy that you know you he's a guy that you're going to have to look less about his stats and more on what he brings in terms of physical and intangibles. And I think he brings a lot of them. Um, I think he brings a lot of things that. You know, we've looked and kind of and kind of seen um, what Chris Ballard has looked for in his few years of drafting for the Colts in the later rounds. Think of those, some of those guys that he got: EJ Speed, Dion Kane, uh, Reese Fountain. Th there's a lot more, but you know, you see some of these guys, and there you notice a common trend of these guys are pretty physical, like pretty good physical specimens, and. You know, I think in the same way here, James Morgan makes a lot of sense. It doesn't, you don't have to break the bank and draft a quarterback. And even if James Morgan doesn't develop into anything special, I mean, he has, it's like you're taking a shot at, he could be, he has, he could have that upside to do that. But if he's not, you're only spending a fifth round pick. It's not the end of the world. Maybe he could be a good backup quarterback for you, but he's got all those intangibles. And I think working with a quarterback, former quarterback and Frank Reich, working with Nick Sirianni, working with this Colts offense who helped limit Andrew Luck's turnovers in 2018. You know, Andrew Luck, that was the biggest knock on him for so long. He turns the ball over a lot. You know, he takes too many hits. Well, what Frank Reich and Nick Sirianni did were, were they, they taught Andrew Luck, you don't have to make every play. You don't have to truck that guy down the field. You can go out of bounds, right? 
You saw that in that Buffalo game. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you don't, you don't have to try to force passes in there all the time. You can take the check down sometimes. And I think the same deal here, here is with Morgan. You know, he didn't have, doesn't have great stats, but he's got everything that you need. He's probably one of the smartest quarterbacks in this draft class. And it's funny because he's not just the smartest quarterback in this draft class. He's also got one of the biggest arms in this draft class. And I, so he's got the physical tools and he's got the intellectual tools to be a really good quarterback in this league. For some weird reason, though, it has not all come together. Well, you, know, you, can, you, can, you can point a lot of fingers to different situations, but that's the biggest question is like, why hasn't it worked out? And I think the Colts are going to have to do some research and they probably already have done some research on Morgan and seeing why, why is he here? Why, we, why do we project him to be here? You know, what are all the knocks? Why, why, has he, why is he not one of the top quarterback prospects? So those are just things the Colts are going to have to evaluate. Those are things the Colts are going to have to determine. And I think if James Morgan's here, sitting here in, in this round, in the fifth round, you take him. What do you think here? Oh, man, I love the pick, James Morgan. Uh, you know, I've certainly heard more ties between James Morgan and the Colts than I have Jordan Love and the Colts in the last month, to be honest with you. Uh, talking with people, they like James Morgan to the Colts. They think he's an ideal fit. Uh, they like him better than any other quarterback uh, to fit with the Colts. So I, I like the pick, man. I, I really do. Uh, it's you know, addressing a need, certainly for the future. And he's going to be sitting for a year, learning from Philip Rivers, learning from Nick Sirianni, Frank Reich, you know, getting that stuff together. I like the pick. For me, um, you know, if you if you guys forgotten, you know, I've done a couple of trades. I'm still in the fourth round with our pick, our 122nd pick. And with that pick, I'm going to take another wide receiver. And this wide receiver, I truly believe, will be there in the fourth round at 122. I'm going wide receiver Tyler Johnson, Cody. I like him to be a really good number five or a number four uh, if he'll beat out Zach Pascal in training camp. I think if you're looking at the wide receiver position, you called it the weakest position on the team. I agree with that. Well, you're adding some... um, some good talent there in this draft sure hands in Tyler Johnson a good route runner in Tyler Johnson he does everything you want him to do everything you ask of him and he's just the guy who's not gonna wow you but he's just the guy that's going to get it done he's just gonna get it done so that's where I'm at um at 122 all right okay now moving on here to my next pick um, I'm down at nine one ninety three now, and I have the Colts taking a safety, the safety Antoine Brooks out of Maryland. Um, and the Colts right now they have a pretty decent starting duo in Malik Cooker and Kari Willis. George Odom's played some time; he plays a key role in terms of depth and also on special teams. And I think in the times that he's been, you know, had to start in certain pinches, I thought he's played pretty well. They re-signed Roland Milligan to a one year deal. But I think with the loss of Clayton Gathers, just just this just opens it up to getting more depth at that safety position. I think this is probably where the Colts will do it later round. Um, and you know he's a guy that's not overly flashy. He's not going to be a guy that has that high end athleticism, but he's a guy that has a high motor. I think he'd be a good day three pick for the Colts. Um, he he also contributes on special teams, which is big, and he's a good tackler, which is which is key as well and I think he's a solid he can be a solid depth piece for the Colts safeties uh, and a good you know day three guy for the Colts here and kind of shoring up that safety position and and just adding more depth to that position as well awesome 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 good good stuff right there oh man I certainly like that pick uh he's definitely a guy you know like you said that can fill in in the box and everything and I would he's he's definitely a guy that I'm looking at in the safety position in terms of later rounds. So I like the pick. I'm here in the fifth round at pick 160. I mentioned his name earlier, cornerback Lamar Jackson. 
He doesn't get a lot of heat because there's another Lamar Jackson absolutely tearing up the league, and he doesn't get too much shine. But I'm going to be sure to give him some right now. 6'3", 215. He, his best position is probably going to be in press man coverage. He's strong. He's athletic. He can certainly has the build, has the potential to lock down receivers. And I think if you're adding a guy like that, especially this year when you're looking to Kenny Moore, Rocky Sin, Xavier Rhodes to kind of take those starting reins, I think Lamar Jackson as a building block can – certainly help you in 2020 so that's where i'm going with corner assuring up the secondary adding some athleticism more long long athletes on defense Mm -hmm. how many more picks do you have because i just have one more i have 193 and 197 you want me to go ahead and do 193 do it yeah 193 go for it awesome So at 193, I am taking a safety, and I am taking Tanner Muse from Clemson. You -hmm. discussed having a safety that can play a little bit of dime linebacker, that can play, you know, in the box. And Tanner Muse has that build. 6'3", 230. 6'2", I'm sorry. He, when I'm looking at him at Clemson, that's mainly what I'm seeing. He is making some good plays in coverage. But when I'm looking at, at him down in the box, I mean, he's taking on tackles, Cody. He's he's bull rushing guards and not just any guards, some, some pretty good guards. When he played LSU in the national championship game, you know, he went up against Makai Becton on a few plays and he, he did solid. Uh, I, I don't think you're bringing him in to, you know, be a every down safety. But I think if you want to bring him in in zone packages, if you want to bring him in dime linebacker situations, that's definitely an option, man. I really like Tanner Muse as a sixth round option at safety. Mm-hmm. Next guy on my list, uh, he's an edge guy, so I'm helping the edge here. I got Derek Tuska. He's a guy that I think more and more kind of seeing my my buddy Zach Hicks um, over there at Stampede Blue. He's really been hyping up Tuska, saying he's going to be a steal for whoever gets him. Um, And he's a guy out of North Carolina, North Dakota State, I should say. Um, And he's a guy that he, honestly, I could see him being one of the big diamonds in the rough in this draft. Uh, He's a guy that had pretty good combine numbers. Uh, I think he shows a really good ability uh, to get on the edge and create pressure. He has good quickness. He has strong hands. And he's just adding more and more to this pass rush department in terms of the defensive end position, especially if you don't bring back Jabal Sheard, who has not at this point been re-signed. I think it makes a lot of sense. You're not breaking the bank for him. You're not spending another second-round pick on a defensive end and on, on an edge guy, but you're getting a guy with a lot of upside and a lot of potential. So that's who I got there. I got Derek Tuska. Derek Tuska, that's an interesting prospect. If I'm being honest, I think he's probably going to be gone in the fourth round or so because the dude is talented. And when it comes to edge yeah. rusher, if you're talented, you probably don't last uh, in the sixth round. So, but I definitely do like the pick. Another edge guy that people should probably be aware of in the sixth round is James Smith Williams from NC State. He's kind of like a Kamoko Toure, definitely a little thicker, but he just has speed. Uh, I don't see too much when it comes to, because you're talking about edge rusher. That's kind of like the quarterback position. If they're lasting into the sixth round, they're probably not going to offer you much. But with Mm -hmm. James Smith Williams, there's an intrigue there because there has been talk about Chris Ballard you know, kind of liking James Smith Williams a little bit. He has the speed when he gets to Indianapolis. Can he work with Justin Houston? Can he work with Robert Mathis on kind of, you know, building his repertoire in, uh, in the pass rushing department. That's another guy. I think people should, um, should keep in mind if you want to target an edge guy 
in the later rounds. Now for my final pick, the final pick of this episode, I am going with a linebacker from Utah State, Tippa Galliai. He's a guy probably not a whole lot of people know about, but I definitely know about him. He started his career at TCU. He was recruited. You know, he was a defensive end and couldn't exactly crack the rotation due to guys like Ben Banigou, LJ Collier, guys who were selected very high in the draft last year. He then transferred over to Utah State. I've watched his film, and he has... He's a long defender, Cody. You know how much Chris Ballard loves those long linebackers, those long defensive linemen. And when I look at him, he can be kind of like a Kamoko Ture, a specialty pass rusher. You know, he definitely has a good bend. He's a little, you know, a little slim, 235 pounds. But I definitely, definitely see an intrigue there if you want to add some depth some athleticism on the defense when in, in terms of defensive end and a linebacker, uh, you know, he could, you know, come in in short yardage situations, come off the edge a little bit. I definitely like typical eye. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. All right. Well, I think that just might be it for the episode, Cody. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? No yeah, man, that was that was fun. It was a long episode, but we got through it. Lots of good nuggets of info in there for our listeners. Uh, yeah, man, it was it was good stuff. I, I'm glad we did it. All right, it it was fun. It definitely was long, but when it comes to you know you're three days away from the draft, you're we're gonna have a lot to talk about. So uh, <laughs> the next time you hear from us, we're definitely gonna know who is going to be drafted, who was drafted and who can be some franchise players for the Colts. So, guys, I am your host, Michael Tarazis, my co-host, Cody Felger. We love talking football with you guys. We love bringing you some good Colts content. Until next time, it's going to be pretty exciting. I can already, you know, get chills right now talking about it. Until next time, guys, y'all stay safe out there. Y'all stay indoors. Enjoy the draft. Stay safe, and God bless.